Do you come from a family of entrepreneurs? Is this something that was was inbred into you from a little girl? Or is this, you know, as you got older, this was your calling, it was your mission, it was your purpose, and you just decided to set out and do something that was different from what your family had done previously? No, I, I do come from a family of leaders, and I come from a family of that first Black person who did it. I grew up in a small town in Louisiana called Morgan City, Louisiana, uh, Southwest Louisiana. And my uh, father was a business person in his own right. My grandfather was a business person in his own right. My father's father was the first uh, African-American dentist in my hometown. His dad was the first African-American doctor. Um, we had the first African-American school in my hometown, like my Your, your family? Yes, my uh, grandmother and her siblings. Um, my grandmother's sister, she wrote Xavier's alma mater way back in the day, but uh, leadership, getting things done, doing it for our community, doing it for yourself, you know, it's in my blood, it's definitely in my DNA. I'm not the first millionaire in my family, I'm the third. And that's a lot to say for uh, an African-American family. I love that. So <laughs> I, I, I wanna stop there for one second. You're telling me in your family, in your bloodline, yeah. being raised in the South, yeah. because it's different. I'm raised in New York City. The South, we typically, you know, look at as, as our people, there's so many laws and so many obstacles put in place from us rising above. Within your bloodline, there has been three self-made millionaires? Well, I will tell you, my first, my cousin is Kyla Pratt. So she's an actress and she is in L.A. And then my uncle is Geronimo Pratt. Um, and I don't know if you guys are familiar with him, but... I am. Yes, definitely. Um, but I think coming from like a smaller area and a small town, like we all have this drive, right? Mm -hmm. um, and we all want to get it. I just think that it's so much uh, lost and forgotten talent in those smaller areas, especially in the South. And I'm from the deep South. It's like we are climbing hotter and hotter to get out, to be heard, and to do more. I know for me, um, that, that's, that was my story. Even um, my uncle, I mean, he when he finished um, high school, he went to LA with um, his aunt, went to college there, and that's how he um, began his uh, journey, the journey that he was on, um, as well as the leader of the organization that he was involved in. All those guys are from Louisiana. So I just think that, I don't know if uh, if it's because we're from that smaller area, like we are demanding our voices be heard, you know, as loud and we're trying to make as much noise as we possibly could. But I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it's interesting. Um, I had no idea you were a relative of Geronimo Pratt. When I think of him in the organization, I think uh, California, I think Oakland. I, I had no idea he had roots in Louisiana. So, so this is a history lesson right here. <laughs> yes, yes. That's my mother's baby brother. Wow, wow. Okay, so clearly you were molded from an early age to really get out there and do for self. Yes. So it's in your bloodline, we get it. Education, how big was education in your family? Did you go to college? And if so, what'd you major in? Yeah, so I looked at education as my way out of that small town. So I used it as that, um, our whole, we, we're all educated. Um, I'm dual degreed. Uh, I am a product of two HBCUs. Uh, a lot of my family, of course, uh, went to Southern University, that program. I went there. Um, but I got my master's from Tennessee State University in science. So okay. education for me 
was a easy way to get out of that small town that I was in. And I looked at it as such. I tell people that's still there now, that's the easiest way. Go to college, you don't have rent to pay, stay in that dorm, your food is covered, you don't have all that extra stress. So even if you wanna go a different route, then, uh, okay, I don't, I don't feel that I need to get a bachelor's degree or things like that, use it to pull yourself out of the rut or out of the situation that you think you are in. Just use it as a stepping stone. I tell everybody, if I had it to do over again, I would do it the same. Because I think when I obtained my master's, um, which was a whole different level from undergrad, let me tell you, the deadlines we had to, had to meet, um, all of the... The, the, the strains that they put upon us, if you make two C's, you out of here. You know, we all had to step our game up. Yes, I went to TSU. It's a black um, university yep. predominantly. But in my program, in that professional school level, it was only eight of us. The rest were Caucasian. In yes. your master's program? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It was only eight blacks and the rest were Caucasian. And that's at a HBCU, which is fine. But our instructors, I think I may have have had one that looked possibly two that kind of looked like me. The rest weren't. They would uh, contract their instructors out from Vanderbilt. Beautiful. But we had our eight that looked alike we had a point to prove and we pulled together and we got it done. I felt so elevated when I achieved my professional graduate degree. And I think it helped me um, to sustain in what I'm doing right now. Uh, It helped me in being a a success in the business that I'm doing right now. It helps me with management. My, the team, the people that are under me, it helps me run my company. I just feel that by me choosing to go the, uh, I'm going to get my education first route, I, I'm so blessed and I would not change that at all. I, I, you know, I so love that you took the time to stress education. Oh, yeah. You listen to so many of these self help guys and motivational guys and people who, you know, are are selling you on the fact that go out there, start your own business. You can become successful overnight. You don't need school. I, I love that you who has created a business and have yeah. been very, very successful are right. still not just promoting entrepreneurship, but more important, education. Well, it education helped. is always the way out. It helped polish me, right? So it helped me. Uh, it taught me how to um, conduct myself, right? It taught me how to order myself accordingly. It did. And I think that without that... Um, I don't know. I may have come across just a little bit different. You know what I mean? Um, Not saying that that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it definitely helped refine who I am. I I, I truly believe it. You're well-spoken. Obviously, you are extremely intelligent. I could not imagine getting a master's degree in science of all things. Um, That could not have been easy. So clearly, you're a person that is not just good to look at on the outside. And I mean that in the most complimentary way, but you have a brain in your head and you need that in business. It is not just about winging it. It is not just about doing what you think, you know, somebody else did to be successful. But you, as an entrepreneur, you need to be a strategic thinker. You need yeah. to, be, to, 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 to know how to put systems in place. You need to really understand that this is a business. So I'm so happy that you stressed some of these points. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. 
And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.